everyone, welcome back to Nurse Catherine here. Welcome back to another educational style video. In today's video, I am going to be teaching you how to get through your college level anatomy and physiology class and your college level anatomy and physiology lab. This topic was actually the hardest class for me to get through and I struggled greatly through my AMP class and my AMP lab. And I had to work my tail off in those classes. I'm not someone who can just sit down and read and then totally comprehend what I just read. That's not what does it for me. And I quickly realized that that's how a lot of other people were who were also in my anatomy class. And I realized, hmm, the way we are taught how to study just by reading a book and then taking a test was not working for a college anatomy and physiology class. And I even took anatomy and physiology in high school and that was completely different than anatomy and physiology in college on top of having lab in college too because in high school we didn't have a lab portion besides dissecting pigs. That's all we did for our lab portion in high school and the lab portion in college was totally different. But before we get started and talking about the lab portion and the classroom portion, hit that subscribe button right below this video to get updated on new videos that are currently coming out Monday through Friday, educational and vlog style videos all about nursing and all about how to pass nursing school and be the best possible nurse that you can be. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so first I want to give you some tips on classroom work and how you can successfully pass your anatomy and physiology classroom tests. Now, a lot of you may be like how I was. I was awful at classroom and I excelled in the lab portion of anatomy and physiology. And it took me a little while to figure out how to not struggle in classroom work and how I could actually pass my anatomy and physiology class. So first tip I have for you is stop studying how you have always studied. If the way you're studying now is not helping you, then stop studying like that. It just makes simple sense. If you are reading and then trying to take a test and that's not working and you're getting a D in your anatomy class and on your test, that was my first anatomy test. I honestly can say I got a 43%, so I failed my first anatomy test in college, a 43%. I didn't even know 50% of the information that was on that test. And you know why? Because I read and then I tried to take the test and it did not work. So I stopped, which leads me into my second tip. And that would be, since you're stopping the way you study, learn a new way to study. And for me, that was drawing everything out singing songs, making up mnemonics, anything I could possibly do to be creative and not learn the conventional way. And with that, I will say it may have taken a little bit more time to actually draw out a full human body on my apartment wall at the time. I took paper, literally I took printer paper and I drew each body part the head was its own printer paper. The arms, I think, had two or three pieces of printer paper. And I just drew. I didn't care how bad it looked, but that was the way for me to remember different bones, different parts of the skull, and just see the big picture in life size. It probably was the same size as me, so it was probably at least 5'5". Five five, and it was a tremendous help in passing my anatomy class. In nursing school, I made up so many songs for cardiac dysrhythmias, which I do have a video on that if you wanna hear me sing. Um, but that is super helpful too. Get creative with your studying and do something totally different. Flashcards never really worked for me, but I had a best friend 
who also struggled in nursing school with some of the anatomy and she made flashcards and that worked so well for her. So that might be something that you can try as well. And lastly, for the classroom portion of your anatomy and physiology class, ask a family member to review the information with you. I was lucky enough to have my mom and she is actually a nurse and so is my aunt and so is like everyone in my family it feels like but ask someone to review the information with you even if they don't even know what they're talking about see if you could make your own test sheets and have them quiz you off of those test sheets and you can find so many free tests online and even ask your instructor for other ways that you could study what has worked for other students in that class because I'm sure you are not the only student struggling in your anatomy and physiology class. All right, now let's go into the lab portion of your anatomy and physiology class. And this can be challenging for some people. Some people might be better in classroom and some people might be better in lab. I personally was always better in the lab portion because it was more hands-on. And that's the kind of learning that works for me is hands-on learning, not just reading doesn't go well for me at all. So some tips that I have for you guys is go to the lab for open lab time. I remember in college there were times that our instructor would give us that they would have an open lab. So you could go in, get hands on with the mannequins, get hands on with the instruments or the different body parts of these mannequins, whatever it may be, the different layers of the skin, everything like that, different bones. I remember going to the lab and actually putting together an entire skeleton. Like, I was putting different parts of the body together and we had a little study group that we would do. So maybe try something like that. That was very helpful for me. Secondly, Create your own lab, that entails getting very creative, but if you can't go to open lab because you're working, create your own lab at home and draw out the bones and then piece them together yourself. Put them all over your table and then piece the body parts together and that way you can see how it goes together. It's almost like doing a puzzle. Like you know how the skull has all the different bones of the skull? Well, you can piece that together and create a skull. So that would be another thing that you could do as well. And I already went over creating flashcards. You can read and reread if that does work for you. Like I said, that didn't work for me and it doesn't work for a lot of people, but maybe you need to be less creative if you are someone who's watching this and says, I don't read. Well. Maybe you should read because you are supposed to read. And then lastly, watch YouTube videos. Go and just search this, whatever body part you wanna learn or songs about how to remember the body, anything. Just find random YouTube videos. Doesn't matter how many views they have or how long they are. If it's going to help you pass your college anatomy and physiology class, then go watch it. That is it for today's video, guys. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned some information from this video, and if you have any other tips and tricks for those who are struggling in their anatomy and physiology class, comment below so they can see how they can also pass anatomy and physiology. Before you go, hit that subscribe button, like right now, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you in tomorrow's video, and don't forget to hit that notification bell for new videos coming out currently every single day, Monday through Friday. All right, have a good night, everyone.